Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal if you're new here and today I just wanted to talk to you about why I decided to go off NDEP. Um, NDEP is an amitriptyline. I have a video about going on it and how I was happy with my one month of progress and then <laughs> I kind of went downhill. So I'm going to try and not edit this video too much because I am having a flare up, but um, I guess let's just jump straight into it. So the thing that I noticed the most, or like my major concern that I had before and now, which is why I'm going off it, was the weight gain. So I have never been the skinny kid in the class. I uh, worked really hard on dropping weight. I just like, I dropped like 13 kilos between high school and university. And I'd been able to keep that off for like five years, no worries. I did start gymming right before I started taking NDEP and when I started gymming um, I was building muscle I was gaining weight but I was like noticing that I was more toned as opposed to getting like fat and stuff um, but then probably like a month and a bit in I started to weigh myself properly as I noticed that my face was getting rounder so that's clearly not muscle but um, yeah so I was gaining weight. Um, I actually ended up gaining seven kilos in three months, which is insane because, okay, maybe if you're tall, it doesn't really matter that much, but I'm tiny and it shows. And yeah, my face got really, really round. You can literally see it in my videos from before. And that was like the thing that I was really scared of, ha of having happen. <laughs> and I thought it would be like, oh, it, like, you know, wouldn't be a thing. I'm only on 10 MG anyways. Like, People use this for depression at 150 mg. Like, surely the side effects will not be that bad. <laughs> well, tell that to my seven kilos of weight that I now have to go and lose. Um, let's see. That was a really big part of why I decided to go off it. But of course, um, I'm not like, I'm not saying that I would go off a medication that would help me just because of weight gain. Something that also contributed actually is kind of low-key the main factor is that or at least combination those two together made the main factor is that it stopped being as effective as it was in that first month so I remember telling you guys in the video that I will link below that um, it was really great I was feeling a lot less pain I had like two weeks of literally pain-free like everything I was doing whatever I wanted on the computer it was amazing that by month two, one and a half, somewhere around there, I've taken a hundred tablets, wait, that makes it, yeah, about month two, gone. Um, I don't really know what happened, I'll be honest, maybe my body just like got used to it. Um, and so obviously if it wasn't going to work and I was gaining weight from it, like I didn't want anything to do with it anymore. And I noticed that as I started going off NDEP, instantly I was plateauing weight gain. So I would, I gained a lot, but it probably two weeks ago when I started going down to half a tablet every two days, I noticed that I was losing weight. And I'm like really happy about that. And I'm glad it's reversible and not permanent, um, but it is still hard work. Like I have to watch what I eat a lot more now, which sucks, but yeah. Um, and something I also noticed that I want to tell you about is that the weight gain came from like a change in my appetite completely. So I don't know, some girls are probably affected by this like more than others, but I am one of them. Uh, right before period time, I want chocolate. Like I want all the, all the chocolate. I don't really like candy. I want all the chocolate in the world. I will demolish it. Like I can eat the whole block in one day. No problem. However, when I was on NDEP, about one and a half months, two months in, I was having that feeling every single day. Like it wasn't just before period time, it was I really wanted chocolate all the time. And if I didn't eat something sweet after my meal, I didn't feel full, like at all. It's really weird because I still remember having the physical sensation of having enough food in your stomach, you know, like when it's tight and you, you know you shouldn't eat more, but I was just starving, like I felt empty. And then I had the sugar and it would be fine. 
And um, one of my friends who's had um, quite a bit of experience with depression and anxiety medication, she also said that sometimes it can change your gut bacteria. I don't know how much of that affected me, but I mean, I feel like the, the sweets cravings were just off the charts and I actually ended up liking candy. And I don't like candy. I don't like candy because it rots my teeth and that freaks me out. But I also don't like, like, I don't like hard lollies. I don't really like super, super sugary stuff. So wanting that and craving that was really weird to me. So those were the two reasons why I got off NDEP. And I'm sorry if I've been rambling, but basically the process for getting off it was not cold turkey. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. My specialist recommended that I should do uh one tablet no half a tablet every day from one tablet every day and then decrease that to half a tablet every second day and weirdly enough as i was decreasing it um i felt less pain and i also felt happier i don't know uh, maybe my body just like kicked in and did the right thing but um that because when i was decreasing i was going i decreased it over I decreased it the first step over one week and then the second step I'm still doing. I'm just doing it until I finish off my tablets because I want to do it like really smoothly, especially since I'm starting a new job. Um, so I don't actually know whether or not the flare up now is related to starting a new job and being stressed about that or it's actually related to um, going off the end up. Like I'm sure that it had some sort of benefit. Um, it did increase my quality of life for a little bit. But after two months, I, I wasn't really feeling anything like better, if that makes sense. Like I wasn't I wasn't experiencing that same high of not being in pain. Um, and it's kind of it's kind of upsetting because unless you've lived with chronic pain, you you like won't understand that or you won't realize that it kind of wrecks your mood a little bit, especially when it's just it's just like on the edge of being very painful, like past tolerable, um, slash it's always in your conscious mind. And I don't know, I'm like upset that it didn't work, but there's always other stuff we can try. Um, and one of my physios who has now retired, unfortunately, cause she was great. Um, she, when I told her that I was on it cause she took a break over Christmas and then she decided to retire. She was like, concerned um she said that i shouldn't have been given access to that kind of drug because it's a hard drug i don't know what that means um but i mean it is what it is and so now i'm in the process of finishing off my last 50 tablets so altogether i would have done 100 and yeah i don't know that's kind of it there was no um there was no what did i have tiredness drowsiness that kind of weird like really out of it um on the way out in fact i felt better than i did while on it <laughs> so i don't know maybe is it even that i just have to like fluctuate it don't listen to that like properly as medical advice i'm just thinking to myself now um but yeah we are back at square one meds don't work my physiotherapy is not working uh i don't know i just have like this awful back pain that is killing me when I wake up in the morning and I want to get that fixed but until then yeah. also another update is that I asked to be put into the public system and so in Australia basically what happens is that Medicare will get bulk billed um, so you don't have to pay any out-of-pocket costs just because now I'm at the point where I've seen a specialist already I've seen multiple specialists already um, one for nerves one for sports I've seen like hand therapists a ton of physiotherapists like seriously physiotherapy oh. I don't like physiotherapy anymore I'll be honest I feel like it's really hard to find a good physiotherapist and I'm just very frustrated and people with chronic pain will also be able to understand the frustration that I feel it's just I just want an answer and I don't want to have to keep shelling out money for it like it's insane I pay like $160 for 30 minutes with a physio and then like $120 an hour for massage and if I don't do massage my back kills me 
And if I don't do physio, I can't get better. And the physio sometimes doesn't even know what's going on. So, mmm. It's, it's just hard. <laughs> but, you know what? We soldier through it and I'll figure out how to, you know, work responsibly to my body. Um, for my body to not wreck it anymore. And I'll pick up sports. I'll do all that kind of stuff. But yeah, that is it. That is my entire rant. Thank you for <laughs> listening. And I hope that this has helped somehow. Um, yeah, sorry this is late as well by a day. I was, am still in a pretty bad flare up so I didn't wanna film anything or edit anything um, too quickly. And I was trying to figure out like, what should I post? And this seems to be the most appropriate. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next one, which should be next week. And it is diet related. I'm trying out a product. So cool. I will talk to you then. Bye guys.